Hello everyone, I'm meteorologist Charlie Neese. It is Tuesday, the 20th of May, 2025, and here on Hotspot Weather, where we take a look at the weather hotspots across the country for the next few days, we're gonna be focusing in on, once again, the Ohio and Tennessee River Valleys, where we have a level three out of five risk for severe weather. Some of these areas were hit so hard last week, including areas like London, Kentucky. Now, today's risk is a little bit more conditional meaning it's not 100% clear if we're gonna have enough instability for some of the biggest storms like we had last week, but certainly there's energy in the atmosphere and we will see the, at least the potential for more tornadoes across Kentucky, Tennessee, Northern Mississippi, and Northern Alabama. That's where that level three out of five risk of severe weather as defined by the Storm Prediction Center is highlighted. And you can see it here with that enhanced risk, Kentucky, Tennessee, Mississippi, Alabama, eastern parts of Arkansas, and also southeast Missouri. Around that, a level two out of five, a slight risk for Illinois, Indiana, and that extends down into northern Louisiana and also down to around Birmingham, between Birmingham and Montgomery, Alabama. And then around that, we have a marginal risk. And including the risk for tornadoes, this map shows what the Storm Prediction Center is highlighting as the highest risk for tornadoes with a 10% chance of a significant tornado, EF2 or higher, within 25 miles of any one point. That's what that black hatching indicates. And then around that, there's a lower risk, but that area is centered on cities, including Bowling Green, Kentucky, Nashville, Tennessee, Huntsville, Alabama, Tupelo, Mississippi. So if you live in any of those areas or around there, certainly have a way to hear warnings as we go through the daytime today. Now, fortunately, the risk starts to turn lower as we head into your Wednesday, the 21st, it all shifts to the east and there's a level one out of five risk along the Atlantic coast for much of Virginia down into the eastern half of North Carolina, the east coast of South Carolina, and down into southern Georgia and northern Florida. And after that, the overall pattern gives us a break. We'll see a few scattered areas of thunderstorms over the next few days, but the severe risk starts to significantly decline as we start to see a semi-permanent trough set up across the eastern part of the country that brings cooler air to the eastern part of the country. Let's take a look at that on the computer models. At the jet stream on the GFS, the global forecast system, also known as the American model. Of course, we have to have these lower level energy, but we also have to have the upper support in the form of an energized jet stream. And we have that as that energy is coming into the Ohio and Tennessee river valleys on the 20th. And then that pushes off toward the east as we head into Wednesday and weakens a little bit. The other thing I want you to notice is as we go through time, we see this trough set up across the eastern part of the country, a big dip in the jet stream, and that brings cooler air as we head into Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday even, and it's almost a semi-permanent trough that sets up. This is gonna bring some cool air to the Northeast, the big cities of the Northeast, as we work into the end of the week into the weekend as well. Meanwhile, the West will be warming up. But once we see this system pass by again, our chances for severe weather on a large scale really start to decrease and we get a break from this pattern for a little while. And we get a break from some of the heat that's been plaguing the eastern part of the country, especially the deep south where temperatures have been running upper 80s to around 90. And it's also been running into the 70s and 80s across the northeast. We're going to see a little bit of a bump down in those temperatures as well to pretty cool at times, especially in New England. All right, this is the way that the surface features play out as we go through the daytime today. I'll play that again. You can see this is during the evening hour, 7 p.m. This is probably some of the peak times that we'll be seeing the severe weather across the Ohio and Tennessee River Valleys in this line, this arc stretching from the surface area of low pressure down to the south. Behind that, pretty quiet as well. Notice even some snow showers across the upper Midwest into the northern plains on the back side of this system. Then as we head into the day on Wednesday, the chances of severe weather finally push off the east coast. We still see a lot of rain and it's kind of a cool rain from the Great Lakes into the northeast, New York State, Pennsylvania as well. And then that area of low pressure only slowly slides to the east. More rains, some locally heavy as we head into your Thursday night and early Friday. This is across New England with some heavy rains right off the coast of Maine, back into parts of New Hampshire and Vermont. Meanwhile, the rest of the country is somewhat quiet. You can see areas of a few embedded thunderstorms across Texas, central Texas, back into parts of Kansas and Nebraska, but that's about it. And really not looking at a very good chance of severe weather. Could be some 
hail in some of these areas, but not a widespread severe weather risk. Let's focus in on the thunderstorms as we go through the day here across the Tennessee and Kentucky areas down into northern Mississippi and Alabama where we have that enhanced risk of severe weather for today. And you can see, even during the morning hours, we're starting to see some thunderstorms. This is wave one that really starts to congeal and move into areas like Clarksville around 10 o'clock in the morning, Nashville around 11 o'clock in the morning, Columbia, Franklin around 11 o'clock in the morning. That's just wave one though. There could be some strong, maybe locally severe storms with that band, but behind it, we see a rapid redevelopment of thunderstorms. And by the time we get into three to four o'clock in the afternoon, Nashville is seeing more thunderstorm activity that extends all the way back into West Tennessee. Now, how much time will there be between the first wave in the morning and the second wave in the afternoon for the atmosphere to warm up again and recharge? The warmer it gets, the more unstable we get. That's where we stand a chance of seeing some of these thunderstorms that could produce tornadoes. If we don't warm up quite enough, then we may see the chance of severe weather, but maybe a lower risk of strong tornadoes, which is good. Then as we head into the evening hours, that shifts to the east into East Tennessee. By the time we get into nine o'clock in the evening, we've got thunderstorms from Knoxville back to north of Chattanooga. The back edge is coming through Nashville down into the Columbia area. And then after nine o'clock, this last band that's across parts of Illinois, Indiana into Western Kentucky, you can see how it tries to fall apart as it moves toward the east. So it looks like the most significant time for severe weather will be between about two o'clock in the afternoon and around 10 o'clock at night in that window. And again, it's somewhat conditional. It has to be able to warm up enough to get enough instability to fire the bigger storms for tornadoes. And we may have enough rainfall off and on through the day in this region that it holds the instability levels down just a little bit. So we have a slightly lower risk of the big tornadoes compared to last week, but certainly don't let your guard down. Make sure that you have a way to hear warnings through the day in this region because we still have a lot of shear in the atmosphere, which could overcome the lack of instability, certainly something to watch. As far as the weather goes after this system moves out, again, we've got that semi-permanent trough across the east. And because of that, the Climate Prediction Center is calling for temperatures to be much cooler than average across the east. Let's take a look at that. And this is between May 27th and June 2nd with the bullseye of the highest probability of below average temperatures being right across the Ohio and Tennessee River Valleys again. And so we are gonna see a significant pattern flip from temperatures near 90 for places like Nashville over the last few days to going into the low 70s. And some folks north of Nashville may not be getting out of the 60s for a day or so as we end the week. So much cooler than average temperatures in this area. Meanwhile, the west warms up. But as we head into next week, things will start to level out a little bit and we'll start to see temperatures rebounding quite a bit. But this eastern trough is gonna set up and hang with us for a little bit. We are gonna be seeing those below average temperatures for a little while. Certainly, again, a pattern change. Now, if you need help formulating your severe weather safety plan for your family, check out this video. And also, you can check out my YouTube shorts where I have lots of interesting tornado facts and more safety tips there. Make sure that you have a way to hear warnings if you're in those risk areas for today and make sure to stay safe.